Hallelujah. Enjoyed such close fellowship. And when you get to understand this, you, you, you just love Jesus. He had never, he had never been separated from his father. All the times this wonderful fellowship. And for the first time in his life, something was going to happen to him that would separate him from his father. What was it? Our sins would be laid on him on the cross. He would become the same sacrifice on that cross. And the father who will never look at sin directly, always he will turn away from sin. That father is going to turn away from him. See, he had worked so closely with his father, he knew exactly what the father would do. He would be made sin. He would be made sin, Jesus. And the father's going to turn away from him. And that's going to separate him from his father. Of course, there was the promise that he would raise him back to life. But he didn't even want to be separated. Now, think about some of you. I mean, you just love this, your son or your daughter so much. And then you train him through school. And then you help him pay and get an admission into a university in Germany. All right? And then the day comes, you are helping him get everything. You help him shop and get everything, get all the money. You've been doing all this. The day you take him to the airport, you start crying like you don't want him to go. But you made all the plans. <laughs> He's coming back. Three months, holidays. He's coming back. You know it. <laughs> there you are hugging and kissing and like you don't want to go am I right how many of you understand what I'm talking about it's just temporary you know he's coming back but just the fact that you're not going to see him for the next several months will pull tears out of your eyes look at this Jesus had never been separated from his father now he will be made seen on that cross. Not only that, he would become a captive of Satan. He will go to the regions of the damned. Think about it. To the place where every cursed man goes. He will go to the place where every wicked person goes. To the place where every evil dwells. That's where he's going. And he knows it. He knows the devil pretty well. He's met him before. And now he's going to be left to him. And Jesus looks at this and he doesn't want to go. He had lived such a holy life. Think about you. Just think about you. You've lived such a pretty good life. Such a holy life. And now they arrest you for some dumb reason. Now think about you. You're such a holy fellow. You, you've been so, I mean, all your life, everything has just been cool. And then they get you for this dumb reason that you were loitering. And you got stranded. You needed somebody. And they carried you in that van and took you to the police station and you got there in the night time and here are all these criminals boy they were stinking and you knew it and they put you in there for the night no matter how clean you were you felt dirty just to be there I'm thinking about those old guys there so dirty coming to put their hands the hands on your shoulder. Why are you here? I killed five people. Why are you here? How many do you kill? <laughs> and the other one comes out broke into a bank. I'm a bank robber. Did you do the same? How do you feel? That's where Jesus went. To murder us. 
haters, killers, evil men, and then all these demons that ran those guys crazy. And all these little rascals in hell. Jesus looks at this, he's going to go into hell. Those devils that made men blind. Those unclean spirits that got them epileptic. Forming in the mouths and rolling in the mud. And Jesus is going to be with them. No, he doesn't want to go. He says, Father, all things are possible. I know you can shortchange the plans. You can. And you make the plans. You, you can. You can alter it a little. Just, just do it just for me. Huh? Oh, if it be possible. Let this cup pass from me. But then he quickly adds, nevertheless, not as I will, as you will, because you're the perfect one. I I'm just saying this because this is my thinking at this, at this moment. This is my thinking. See, he wants us to follow his example. Do you want to say? This is just my thinking. Lord, this is my... Have you ever asked for something and you felt deep inside you, you were asking for the wrong thing? Did you ever feel that way in your life? While you're still praying, you just felt something inside. You're asking for the wrong thing. That's the right time to quickly say, not as I will. <laughs> and you can be sure the Father will not be offended because Jesus is the same. Not as I will, Father. Not as I will. I'm just saying what I'm thinking at the moment. Just in what I'm thinking at the moment. You know, that's enough scripture to let us know that God Almighty was not the one that turned into Jesus. And I said this one time, and some folks said, You don't believe in the Trinity, see you? You don't believe in the Trinity. I thought, They're the guys who don't believe in the Trinity. I sure do. You don't. You think you do, but you don't. Because you say that God Almighty is the, is the ice block. All right? That melted into water. And then God heated up and evaporated. Same mass. What do you think? Same thing in three different states. Solid, liquid, and gas. Same mass. The mass doesn't change. I said that in the minister's conference. When the, yeah, they thought, because the guy, he was explaining that, you know, God Almighty, and he said, uh, just like you have solid, and then you, you, you have this liquid, the same uh, uh, solid turns into the liquid, and then turns into um, the gas. And I thought, did you ever read, Father, in your physics or chemistry textbook, the mass doesn't change. Praise God. Are you still here? See, the truth is, that idea is not Trinitarian. Jesus is a separate person from the Father, who is also a separate person from the Holy Spirit. Praise God. Well, thank you, Lord Jesus. In a way, when look at who we are. He prayed that prayer. And he's showing us something. And I want to go farther here. Verse 37, St. Mark's Gospel, chapter number 14. And he cometh. You know, he's praying his prayer over there. And um, remember, he, he went a little farther and left Peter, James, and John. Uh, he said, watch while I pray. And he was praying. And they saw him. They knew he was praying. They heard him as he was praying. And they drifted into, into sleep, into slumber. And so... Watch this, verse 37. And he cometh and findeth them sleeping and said unto Peter, Simon, sleepest thou? Simon, are you sleeping? Oh. Couldest not thou watch one hour and just here to pray one hour? Can't you watch with me just one hour? Watch ye, boy, this is what gets me here. Watch ye and pray, lest ye enter in a temptation. Watch ye and pray, 
lest ye enter into temptation. The spirit truly is ready, but the flesh is weak. The senses. I'm, see, here I am. I really want to serve God. I want to do the best thing I can for God. I want to live all my life for God. This is just like you. This is the beginning of the year. How long you really want to serve Him? How you've made up your mind you don't want to make no mistakes. You want to serve God with all your heart and all your life and all your soul, all your mind. You really want to serve God. And God knows about it. But now Jesus counsels you by the Holy Ghost and says, Son, daughter, watch and pray that you enter not in a temptation. The Spirit indeed is ready. He gives your spirit pass mark. He says, I look into you, I know you're ready. I can see it inside you. You're ready. You want to do anything I tell you to do. I know it. You want to live for me. I know it. But watch and pray. You know, Jesus, he knew all of this and he knew if he didn't get to praying, something could just happen that he didn't want to happen he didn't want to displease his father but he he began to feel the pressures every time he thought about something he saw himself in hell and he didn't want to see that every time he saw himself on the cross and he didn't want to see that and he thought dear god dear god dear god dear god i, I, I really don't want to go through this thing i'm going to be separated i'll be made seen on that cross <sighs> and so he felt those pressures he said i don't want to make no mistakes I've got to pray. I've got to pray now. And he said, follow me. I was wondering, where, where's it going? Where's it going? He'd been talking about, I'm going to die. Send a man who'll be slain. He'll be handed over to the Romans. He'll be slain. The thought that he'll rise again. He'd been saying all this, making all these beautiful confessions, and they knew about it. But suddenly he got the pressures now. This is the time. Have you ever felt that way? You've been preparing for an exam. You, you thought you knew all the questions. You, you've tried. You are ready. But now is the time. You're about to get into that hall. And just for the moment you thought, hey, come on here. Hey, this is the final exam. I better make it. Hey, hey. I mean, this is the mother of all exams. No matter what the others were, I've got to make this. I can't fail now. And here's Jesus. And he says, come on, I've got to pray now. And they follow him. And I'm just wondering, so why is it? Well, he's about night time. So what are, uh, uh, my children, uh, uh, have you seen your little kid lately? No, three days now with Jesus. This is a terrible thing. My wife wrote me a letter the other day and said, aren't you coming home? And so, and so Jesus said, all right, all right, all right. All right, you all stop here. Uh, Peter, James, and John, you follow me. He leaves the other grumblers over there. And, and these three, you know, they're not talking, they're the, the big three. They're the ones who tell the others, hey, be cool. <laughs> so they follow the master. <laughs> they're the Lord's prayer warriors. <laughs> so, oh, the Lord says, hold on here. Yes, sir. And then he moves over just a few feet away from them. And then they are thinking about, did you hear what he said? Did he say, let this cup pass? Yep, I thought he said that. But he's sweating. John observes he's sweating. He's sweating. And then Jesus begins to vibrate. And James is... <coughs> and Peter holds on and says, you're sleeping. You better wake up. And John, he trusts Peter, the Pope, to watch everybody. So he says, as soon as the Lord comes, please let us know. And then he goes, and James is sleeping, and Peter holds on, he's the Pope. And then Jesus is not saying anything more. He just keeps saying, read the Bible. He doesn't say anything more. He just keeps saying, Oh, Father, all things are possible with you. 
If it is possible, let this go pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as you will. And Peter says, but he just keeps saying the same thing. He told us not to repeat our prayers. <laughs> Peter goes to sleep. Now the master comes. He doesn't say, John, James. He says, Simon. Can't you watch with me just one hour? Look, hey, come on here. Watch something. This is beautiful. Let me read from verse 37 down. Now, now, and he come in and find them sleeping and said unto Peter, Simon, sleepest thou? Couldest not thou watch one hour? Watch ye and pray, lest ye enter in a temptation. The spirit truly is ready, but the flesh is weak. And again, he went away and prayed and spake the same words. And when he returned, he found them asleep again, for their eyes were heavy. When I read that, I thought about me sometimes. Dear God, dear God, I don't want to pray. And I'm thinking, ooh, I'm just going to pray. I'm going to pray heaven down. I'm going to shake the heaven so much, God's going to ask me what's the matter. <laughs> and you go in the name of Jesus. And you wait for the angels to send that attention because you, you are, you're going to give God this prayer at this time and he will sure have to answer in a hurry. In the name of Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, you're like you're revving your car. Mm -hmm. And God's getting ready now. In the name of Jesus. Uh, mm. Thank you, Jesus. I think I better read the Bible first because... And then you start reading thinking maybe when I read, I'll be more awake than... Uh, hmm. And then you go... Was the last thing I said? <laughs> Who was the last thing I said to God? Oh God, forgive me for whatever I said, but I was trying to tell you that. Uh, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Why? Because the eyes are what heavy, and Jesus understands this. Watch this. Watch this. He says, watch ye, verse 38, watch ye and pray, lest ye enter in a temptation. The spirit truly is ready, but the flesh is weak. He knew when you signed a contract for this all night prayer you was going to do with him. He knew it. He knew when you were writing down all those prayer requests, the prayer points with which you will shake heaven today. He knew it. The Bible says in verse 40, and when he returned, he found them asleep again, for their eyes were heavy. Neither wished they what to answer him. This time they didn't know what to, what to say to him. They were ashamed. He had reprimanded them before, only to come back and find them still sleeping. This time, Jesus doesn't say nothing. And Peter And then the master walks away and Peter, sleep, I bind you. <laughs> You're trying to come between me and Jesus. I bind you, I rebuke you, I cast you out, I, 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 I curse you. Go, go from me. And John is saying, sleep away from me, away from me, 
away from me. James is just saying, go. <laughs> Only for the master to come the third time. And he finds them sleeping. Have you ever been there? You thought, now, ah, I caught me sleeping. Ah, Father, forgive me. I won't try that again. Then you started. In the name, you were pacing the floor. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. And you were praying. You think that by walking, you're not going to... In Jesus' name. And then suddenly you're... Uh, you're s- <laughs> oh, ba 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 Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> you sleep standing and you can't believe you. <sighs> then some people think maybe they have a demon. No, you don't have a demon. Just learn how to stay awake. Praise God. Here the master counsels us. By the time they woke up the third time, it was too late. You wake up the third time, you can't believe it. It's quarter to eight. Dear God, it's too late. You wanted an hour with the Lord. You blew it from five all the way. Now it's quarter to eight and you can't believe it. You're late for anything else. So what? Father, forgive me. <laughs> and you're getting dressed and then, what? You're going to pray while you're driving to work. And this happens every time until you feel so ashamed of you. And that's the way you end at 2000. Now you're in 2001 and you're saying, prayer, my prayer life shall be excellent. In the name of Jesus, no sleep will take my prayer life from me. No devil will and nothing will. Now Jesus says, pray, watch and pray that you end and not in the temptation. What are you going to do? You're going to start praying now first. The Bible tells us something so beautiful. In the 23rd chapters in Luke's gospel, on the same occasion, Matthew doesn't see it and Luke doesn't see it, but... Uh, 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 Mark doesn't see it. Luke does. Luke does by the Spirit. I believe Peter saw it. And, and, uh, and um, you know, Luke must have gotten the message. Because Peter was, um, was the chief. He had to have seen everything. St. So Luke's Gospel, tw- 22nd chapter. 22nd chapter. <clears throat> And I, I, I'm reading to you, same, same occasion, from verse 41, from 40, 40, 40, 40. And when he was at the place, he said unto them, pray that he enter not into temptation. All right, do you get it now? Good. 41. And he was withdrawn from them about a stone's cast, and kneeled down and prayed, saying, Father, if thou be willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. And there appeared an angel unto him from heaven, strengthening him. Brothers and sisters, that was the Holy Spirit of God. See, he's the only straightener from heaven. Praise God. This is the straightener. The Bible says they appeared unto him an angel from heaven, strengthening him. This is what we need. And thanks be unto God, that's why he sent us the Holy Ghost to strengthen us. So that in times of crisis, in times of temptations, we will not drown. This was what he had. This was the reason that night he was still praying and he was able to pray himself through that pressure. The pressure was coming in the morning. They'll get him tonight. Tomorrow he'll, he'll be on trial. And while standing there on trial, he'll either deny his father or stand his ground. But tonight, I've got to win, he says. I've got to win. I've got to win. And so he prays. He prays. Sleep is coming. But he prays. He was out there all day with the disciples. Now they're sleeping. They don't have the Holy Ghost. So they sleep off. You do have the Holy Ghost. But you may still sleep. Except you put what you've got to work. The Bible says they appeared unto him an angel from heaven. Strengthening him. 
strengthened him. He says, watch and pray that he enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Today, this is what your prayer is going to be. You're going to have to pray because the temptations are of different kinds. We get temptations from different sources. The first set of them come from the word. Another one from the flesh. And another one from the these are the different sources of temptations, different kinds of temptations. You're either being tempted through your own senses, your flesh, or you're being tempted through the world and all it offers, or you're being tempted by the devil. You have to make up your mind. This is the time to win that war. You have to win first, not at the time of temptation. You start laying claims to promises. If the strength wasn't there, 